Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to take you back to Fiji Islands and show you the Nag Mandir, the snake temple. And I'm going to show you the origin and the current status of the growing rock. There's a mysterious growing rock in the temple in the shape of a snake. I will also talk about the significance behind some of the Indian rituals. Welcome to my channel Indian Cooking with Suganti. The information I'm going to share with you in this video is what I heard from the local people. This video is actually a small documentary. About 95 years ago, a man named Algu, A-L-G-U, he found a growing rock in the shape of a snake in the middle of a jungle, deep in the jungle of Vanua Levu. Vanua Levu is the second largest island in the Fiji groups of island. And uh, he started worshipping the stone, but he did not share the information with anybody else. But slowly the news uh, came out and uh, the locals went into the jungle and tried to locate the stone and found the uh, snake rock. And they started worshipping it by offering milk, fresh fruit and fresh flowers. And they called it lovingly Nag Baba. And started to believe that it has some powers. Snake worshipping is present all over the world in ancient cultures where snakes are seen as strength and renewal. As snakes shed their skin through slugging, they are symbols of rebirth, transformation, immortality and healing. In Christianity, snakes are considered as evil, though in the Bible in the book of Matthew 10 16 Jesus says be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Ancient Hebrews considered snake as a symbol of wisdom. Do you know that there are no land snakes on Fiji? Only water snakes are there. According to Fijian mythology a snake god named Denji created the Fiji Islands and the world. Indians worship snakes because of two main reasons. The Lord of creation, Lord Vishnu, he was sleeping on a five-headed cobra. And uh, Lord Shiva, the destroyer whose role is to destroy in order to recreate. He wears a cobra around his neck. Coming back to the sacred rock in Fiji, there is an old legend about this rock. In 1930, the Fiji government wanted to construct a road around that area and this rock was right on the path of the uh, plan. So a British uh, construction contractor, he wanted to bulldoze the uh, stone to make way for the road. But he could not able to convince any local Hindu workers to bulldoze it. So he himself um, tried to operate the bulldozer and tried to bring the stone down, but he was not able to. And the legend goes that he passed away that same night. The British man could have died of a curse of the rock or he could have died of a heart attack. Because the whole day of hard work trying to bulldoze the stone, which was uh, not just the piece that's showing outside, the whole bigger um, chunk of the rock was underneath the ground so it's not that easy to bulldoze that stone so the whole day of hard work and the frustration and the anger because no one was helping him so everything combined could have cost him a heart attack and his life after this the government didn't do anything to the stone they just uh, changed their plan and rerouted the road the news of the death of the contractor spread everywhere and people from the neighboring town Lambasa and beyond all over from Venua level came to see the Nagrak and they started worshipping by offering milk, coconut, fresh fruits and fresh flowers. Locals told me originally when the stone was found 
It was under a guava tree, just about two feet tall. When the rock was small in those days, you can pour the milk very easily in its mouth. You can reach the, the top of the rock very easily. Just by standing, you can put the garlands and put milk in its mouth. And um, But now it's grown so big, it's not possible to reach the top of the rock. And by 1969, it grew to six feet tall and they had to build a tin shed to protect the stone from harsh weather and also for the worshippers, devotees who come to pray. By 1972, the stone grew up to 8.5 feet and they had to dismantle the tin shed and build a wider and taller and stronger temple around the Nag stone. The stone kept growing and in 1975 it grew up to 12 feet tall and they had to actually extend the temple and uh, take the roof off and make the roof higher. And currently the stone stands up to 17 feet high. This is how the Nog rock looks now. It's about 17 feet tall. As the uh, rock kept growing, the number of devotees coming to visit the uh, rock also was growing like anything. And the donations started to pour in and a trust was formed. And the temple was reconstructed and extended and the roof was raised and this is how it looks now. People say that at that point they performed some religious ceremonies to stop the growth of the stone. I was told that after the religious ceremony was performed, the stone stopped growing. Nag Mandir is about 8.7 miles from Lambasa town, it takes about 20 minute car drive and it's on the way to the floating island on Vaini Koro Road. During our visit to Fiji Islands end of 2019, we um, had a chance to visit the Nag temple, Nag Mandir. This is how the temple looks now. There's a cave. There's a cave somewhere in front. Uh -huh. it's, uh, Our friend Kaushik is saying there is a cave near the Nag go, Rock, but, uh, have, and uh, people are not able to go fire. inside because when they try oh, to go in, to come a fire comes oh, from fire the comes cave. Hmm. Oh. And this one is somehow linked with the floating island there. Floating. Oh. Fiji Islands are formed by volcanoes created by the convergence of Earth's oceanic plates, Pacific plate and Indo-Australian plate under the sea. All the volcanoes in Fiji Islands are inactive. The last volcano erupted was in the third largest island in Fiji called Tavioni. It's also called Garden Island because of its uh, fertile soil, volcanic soil. So the last volcano was about 400 years ago in Tavioni. So if the geologist report is true that there are no active volcanoes in Fiji, highly unlikely of uh, lava flow or any uh, live volcanic activity under the ground near the cave. In other words, the reason for the fire from the cave cannot be acting volcano. So it has to be some kind of uh, hot springs. Venua Levu is full of hot springs, which is one of the volcanic activities. The red dots on the map are the location of the hot springs. As you can see, there are several hot springs around Lambasa. This one is in Waikwele in Lambasa, W-A-I-Q-E-L-E. -E. I may be pronouncing it wrong. So there are a lot of hot springs around this area where the snake temple is. So there is a possibility. The fire from the cave must be the heat from a hot spring underneath the cave. According to a New Zealand Journal of Geology and Geophysics, a study done in 1985 on geothermal and heat flow in nine locations in Fiji, including Sevu Sevu and Lambasa. According to this journal, the study revealed there is geothermal activity 
260 feet below Lambasa and surrounding areas. So this proves there are underground hot springs in Lambasa. Next time I will try to visit the cave but definitely I will not try to go inside. And I do believe there is a connection between the floating island, the Nag temple and the cave. If you watch my video on the floating island you will understand the connection between the island, the cave and the temple. Our friend Arun shares his personal experience with the Nag rock. There was a small stone, uh -huh. so it was in the shape of a snake. Uh -huh. So people started bringing bottles and bottles of uh, milk, milk uh -huh. and pouring it into the mouth, uh -huh. and then it will all go, go somewhere in. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go in, uh -huh. and then slowly, just slowly, slowly started growing up. But the stone started. Stone started growing. Now it's huge. Okay. Let's go inside the temple. My husband is entering the sanctum. This is where the rock is kept. There's no priest inside, but people do their own puja. They do the arati, they do the abhisheham and everything. And I don't see them breaking the coconut. Usually in Hindu temples, they break the coconut and pray. And we'll talk about the significance of breaking the coconut later. The temple is open to everyone, but make sure you take your shoes off before you entering the temple. And casual clothes are allowed, but make sure you're wearing a clean and decent clothing. You see the bell that's hanging at the entrance. You will see similar bells in all the Hindu temples. The temple bells are made in a special way. It consists of uh, several metals including uh, zinc, copper and a uh, few more metals and the proportion of the metals are uh, calculated scientifically. So these bells when you ring the echo stays for about 7 seconds and it touches the 7 energy points, the 7 chakras of your body and the sound of the, the ringing of the bell actually calms your mind and uh, increases concentration so that you can focus on the higher powers. So this is the beautiful reason for ringing the bells and having the bells at the entrance of a temple. So currently the stone is about 17 feet high and people from actually all over the world come to worship in this temple. With faith, belief and trust you can make miracles happen lot of people who come to visit this temple they believe they have miracles happen in their lives so this is how the nag rock look at the end of 2019 they say it's about 17 feet tall and you could clearly see the tip of the nag rock the mouth of the nag rock and um, if you look at the back it doesn't look like snake but the front uh, it's of course uh, does look like a cobra with its face wide open. Devotees, they go around the rock and uh, pray. Devotees respectfully call it Nag Baba. When I visited the temple, what struck me the most in a sad way was all those uh, plastic malas, plastic garlands. You could hardly see the face of the rock. You know, um, will you, let me ask you one thing, will you wear plastic garlands at your wedding or will you let your daughter wear plastic garlands at her wedding you won't right then why would you put all those plastic malas on something that you think is sacred it's second thing is it's environmentally it's not safe 
if it's not safe for you it's not safe for anything right the whole world is trying to get rid of plastics and um, the plastic um, and the heat in a will affect the rock eventually so just one single flower a fresh flower would be sufficient to show your devotion people ask me if rocks can grow yes rocks can grow due to several reasons mountains can grow because of tectonic forces under the ground created by collision of earth's tectonic plates example himalayan mountains grow 2 inches every year another way is swelling of soil caused by underwater sores or hot springs that also can push the rocks from under the ground onto the surface and the third one is in nature when a rock is buried deep inside the earth beneath the earth it is under enormous pressure and is hard and it's really compact but when the same rock is pushed up above the surface due to pressure from the ground underneath and when it's exposed um, to the surface above the earth the overlying pressure is reduced when it is exposed above the ground then the rocks can grow and increase in size this geological phenomena is called exhumation growth of nag rock is amazing when the stone was originally found it was 2 feet tall so the stone must be growing 2 inches per year approximately so in 95 years it must have grown about 15 feet so now it's standing 17 feet tall In Hindu temples and Hindu ceremonies you must have seen breaking the coconut. The custom of breaking the coconut at Hindu temples and uh, Indian rituals has both a sad and a beautiful significance behind it. But here let's just talk about the beautiful reason behind the custom. The whole coconut signifies the human body and the soul. Outside if you look at the coconut outside you'll see a lot of uh, brown fibers so that actually signifies the desires of human mind. And the shell some people say is the skull or you can say it's the it's the bone structure of your body. And uh, the inside that kernel the white kernel you can say you have the flesh of the body or the your mind. And the water the sweet water inside represents the soul so by breaking the coconut you actually you relieve yourself of all the desires and ego and uh, you just surrender yourself and open yourself to the universe the supreme god and you just merge with the universe and merge with god This is the significance of breaking the coconut. When you look at the nag at the face of the nag you could see the layers uh, formed on the rock. It looked like um, the scales of uh, the snake. So this forms actually when the rock this rock must have been under the earth beneath the earth several hundreds of years ago. So when it was under the earth what happens the compression um the that is the stress that was directed toward the center of the rock the mass of rock that was under the ground this compressed stresses can also result in folding of the rocks and that's the foldings you see here they form the scale of the nag rock but what i don't understand is 
how come the folding did not happen all around the rock just in the front side the face side of it so i don't have an answer for that in those ancient days when men were roaming around in the forest like vagabonds there were some intellectual souls enlightened souls who knew the there is a supreme power so they wanted to teach the rest of the humans how to pray how to uh, think about the supreme power so they had them focus on a stone in order to concentrate on the supreme power so this is the beautiful reason and the origin of idol worship in india the indian culture all the customs and all the rituals they all have a scientific meaning behind it right next to the nag mandir is a shiva parvati temple with 108 steps and as you know um shiva wears a cobra around his neck so there is a connection between shiva and nag after visiting the nag mandir and had a very good experience we are heading back to lambasa If you like to visit the Nag Mandir in Lambasa you can take a short flight from either Nandi or Suva to Lambasa town in Venua Levu and there are a lot of hotels in Lambasa that's the closest town to the um temple and um a lot of restaurants as well and we stayed in Grand Eastern Hotel this is um compared to US standards it's about a three star hotel for transportation you can either take taxis and i heard there are some local buses passes by the temple i hope you enjoy the video and i will be back soon with another interesting video please share this video with your family and friends and also please subscribe to my channel if you have not and also please click the bell button and uh, i will see you soon until then take care and thank you for watching